Well, hey guys, um, I wanted to just thank you so much for the outpouring of kindness and goodness and prayers um, that you guys have shown me uh, in the past couple weeks um, since I first started telling you about um, my diagnosis. And in fact, I don't know if I was all that clear, but there were three at the time, three potential diagnoses, and at this time, there's now three. Um, so when I last left off with you, I posted my video January 23rd, and um, that day, I was going to be going to see uh, the doctor about having my gallbladder removed, um, and uh, so I went that day for the appointment, and it was fine. Um, you know, it's just awkward just <laughs> talking about your medical history and having someone look at you and that just kind of thing so um but he agreed with the doctor at the clinic that eventually this would um, continue to be a problem gallstones don't go away uh, on their own and if you do pass them there's potential for um, other potential problems like pancreatitis and pancreatitis I'm not sure I say that anyway it's just some issues um, and I've been dealing with it for seven years so we're gonna go ahead uh, and do the surgery he had said that it would be three to six weeks three to six months out um, if we scheduled it but he said I could go on a wait list um, and you know I the potential could be that it would be much sooner. I didn't realize that um, I would get a call about a week later and would be going for surgery. So I got a call, um, I don't even know what day it was, it was a couple days ago, um, and I go for surgery this Wednesday, the 7th, uh, to have my gallbladder removed. So, um, Tuesday I'll go for a one to two hour appointment at the hospital for pre, uh, pre-admission and then I'll like do all my vitals and different things like that. Um, so that's two hours. So I also had told you that I was going for an MRI and that took place on the 28th at 6 p.m. and it was a frightening experience. Um, I don't know if you've ever had an MRI before, but I, the experience feels like you are being shoved through a toilet paper tube. Um, it is so tight. Um, if you have any sort of claustrophobia and I don't, but like the, I, if I think about being in a submarine, I just, who that's that I couldn't do. Um, if I know I have an escape, I think I, like, I'm, I can sort of handle like tight spaces and things like that, but I just didn't realize how in fear I would be of this stupid MRI. Um, and because they were examining my liver, I had to have stuff over my abdomen so it made it the space even smaller. Um, it was a freaky experience. Um, and they told me that I would get my results in seven to ten days, and I got them in four. Um, so that just kind of worried, I don't know if I want to say it worried me, but it did give me reason to just feel, um, I'm filming this in the library parking lot and there's like lots of people coming, so I may just take, no, yeah, I'll just keep going. Um, it did give me cause to just feel a little nervous that they came so quickly. Um, our, I had mentioned before that our hospital is the hub of the north. Um, and that closest other hospitals like an hour and a half away and so there's a lot of volume at our hospital and I was just surprised they got the results so quickly so I got the results on Thursday and at 6 p.m. Uh, and the doctor that I was seeing at the clinic who wanted to do all my follow-up works only on Thursdays at the clinic um, and at that point she would have already been done with her shift so I knew I couldn't wait another week, first of all, because I was going for gallbladder surgery on a Wednesday. Um, and so I just took the chance that, I don't know, maybe she'd be in on a weekend because I happened to see her on the weekend the first time. So I went on uh, Saturday to get my results. And um, 
the doctor told me what it was. It's like a four name thing. I, for privacy reasons, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not just gonna put it out there. <laughs> and he had to actually leave the room and go read up on what exactly it is. Um, and when he came back, uh, he had a paperwork filled with um, things that I needed to do uh, testing wise. I needed to go for blood work and have my hormones checked because um, this, it's basically, it's, it's an adrenal tumor is what it is. Um, and he did tell me that most cases are benign, um, but not all, uh, but most cases are. The blood work will reveal a lot and at that point um, I'll, I'm having all, all of my hormones tested and from that point um, I may be referred to an endocrinologist. So that's about all I know at this point. I went this afternoon to go get my blood work done because he wanted it done right away. Um, cause he, I had told him I said I'm going for surgery on Wednesday to have my gallbladder removed, uh, should I go before then? And he said yes, ASAP. So that left basically Monday and Tuesday to do it, and Tuesday I would be at the hospital for a couple hours, so it just made sense to go today on Monday. Um, so I went in at, it's now 2.40, I went in at like 2 o'clock, and they were like, you can't do this now, it's way too late, and I was like, what? And um, so basically, these tests that I'm having done are really extensive and there's a lot of stuff that goes around them as far as preparation. So for instance, some of the, the blood work that I will have done, I can't be awake for more than two hours before I get that blood work done um, because they're checking my cortisol levels and um, <sighs> your cortisol levels after you've been awake for two hours start to diminish. So I need to go right away and have it done. Thankfully it's like right near my house, um, like a five minute drive if even that. Uh, so I'll go tomorrow morning right away and have everything done and they um, start drawing blood at 7.30. So that's good and hopefully um, I'll just be able to sleep in as long as I can up until that point um, yeah so then I also have to collect my urine for 24 hours um, and have to collect it in a certain way I have this big old jug next to me with a solution in it um, and I have to be have there's a bunch of food restrictions that I cannot have in my system for at least three days before I do this urine testing. And it's things like vanilla and pineapple, banana, um, chocolate and onions, did I say onions? whole bunch of stuff that just is so common uh, and I have to have that out of my system for three days. Coffee, tea, oh, that's going to suck. <laughs> three days without coffee um so yes I have to do that um and so I'm like I'm going for surgery on Wednesday like is this gonna like screw anything up like and she they told me that I could definitely do the blood work tomorrow Tuesday um and that I go and do my surgery and then um go ahead and start doing the urine collecting and I'm frustrated because like my because I know I'll probably after surgery I'll be on like clear liquids well clear liquids I had planned to do like chicken broth and my chicken broth has uh, you know had had onions in it um and smoothies and like let's face it like you can do a smoothie with a lot of different fruit but some of this fruit like I can't have I don't it's just frustrating and she told me she's like don't try and say oh well I didn't realize because it'll show up in the testing they'll know um, I have a hair on my lip and so that's happening 
Um, and I'm doing all of this. My husband is away working. He's six hours away. Um, and there's stuff going on in my life, like all health issues aside, the bottom has dropped out of my world. Um, that's a private thing that I'm just, I'm not going into right now. Um, it will eventually be part of my story and I'll be able to share, but it is so traumatic and hard. Um, and I am doing everything in my power just to tie a rope and hang on. Tie a knot at the bottom of my rope and hang on because there's just a lot of stuff going on in my world right now. Um, and it's really tough. And I gotta tell you, my faith is so strong. My faith in the Lord is so very strong. I am seeing Him in everything. Um, I can't tell you like how many times I turn on the radio and there are songs that are speaking exactly, exactly to where I'm at. Um, Bible verses that come to me that are just exactly where I'm at. I'm experiencing scripture in a whole new way. Like today I even, um, I was so just worn and frazzled this morning and I said, Lord, I just, I just need something. And I opened up my email and I got an email a devotion from Proverbs 31 Ministries and um, the title was Being Crushed in Spirit and the verse was about um, how the Lord is close to those who are crushed in spirit. I'll try and leave it on the screen. Um, and I just came to understand that in a new way and the whole devotion was about that and I just... I'm seeing the Lord everywhere, and my faith in Him is so strong. Um, but as a human, and a very normal human, um, my emotions are raw, and I'm feeling so worn, and ragged, and run down. And I had been talking with my sister, and she's like, you just need to focus on yourself this week. She's like, you got so much happening this week and so much going on. And so I just realized I'm like, she's absolutely right. I can't focus on some of this other stuff that's going on in my life. Like I can't, I can't give it attention right now um, because my physical body needs as little stress as possible. Um, I... I'm summoning everything in me just to give to my children. Um, having trouble with Colt right now. He is having tantrum after tantrum. You know, he's four. Um, he doesn't understand sharing. Um, doesn't want to pick up his toys. Like, it's just that kind of stage of life. And he has, he screams bloody murder. And I swear <laughs> that the neighbors are going to call somebody because it just is so loud and it's just taxing. It's so taxing. So, um, it's just a really hard season of life. And I'm thankful that I have, um, people in my world who are so good to me. Um, my in-laws are going through a lot of stuff right now too. Um, but they've both taken leaves of absences, uh, for this upcoming week just to be there for me and to be there for some other family members who are um, going through a lot of really difficult circumstances and they're like taking my kids for me and filling in while I, uh, you know, go for appointments and surgery and running me around and all kinds of stuff, like just selfless people. And I have friends near and far um, who just keep checking in on me constantly um, and who keep pursuing me even when I am giving nothing back and I can tell you that if you have somebody in your world who is broken, who's hurting, who's grieving, um, keep pursuing them even if they don't respond because chances are they have nothing left to give but it means the world that you are pursuing them. At least that's how it feels for me. Um, 
and my family in the States have been amazing, like offering to come up and trying to make plans to just come up and um, me to go there and just um, being there for me at the drop of a hat uh, to talk to and um, giving me encouragement and stuff. So I've got a good group of people around me and um, my church is amazing. Um, they prayed over me yesterday like they prayed for people who needed healing and I stood up and um, I have I've been put on multiple friends like prayer lists at their church and um, people are asking their friends to pray for me like so selflessly I have this one friend um, who's going through a lot of really difficult health stuff and in the midst of sharing with all of her world about her health stuff she was asking them to pray for me also like the selfless and amazing, overwhelming love of other people is just, it's just amazing. And, um, I know so many of you have emailed me, um, and I thank you for that. And I do hope to respond to you at some point. Um, I, I just don't have anything extra in me right now. Please know that your words have ministered to my heart so much, um, and I appreciate you so very much. Um, I just, I don't have anything back to give right now, um, except a thank you. Uh, I never would have imagined the community that I would have when I turned on a camera and started this YouTube thing. Um, I'm so thankful for each and every one of you who, um, have shown up and have been here even when I have been kind of absent from filming and commenting and and all of that um, it means more than I can say it really does uh, and I hope that one day I can even give you an ounce back of what you've given me um, so thank you I am going to head home now um, my dear sweet father-in-law is watching my children and um, He's such a good guy uh, to give up his day to do that and tomorrow he'll be with them as well and then of course on Wednesday and Thursday and I'm thinking maybe Friday uh, so I covet your prayers I thank you for um, for being there for me and um, my family and lifting us up in prayer and thinking of us it means so much so I do have some videos filmed and I'm hoping that when I am kind of relaxing uh, after my surgery that I'll be able to kind of edit those together. I've got um, a homeschool room tour, um, I've got a kitchen day, um, and I have another kind of video that I've kind of put together. And then um, I have a collab that I'll be doing soon. Um, so anyways. <laughs> Hopefully some stuff will be coming soon that won't be quite as depressing as all of this. Um, anyways, thank you guys for everything, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.